You, you guys are in, you're in that wonderful space, the visual, the aesthetic, the, um, the functional, the acoustic. Well, like we say, it's the, it's the nexus of architecture and acoustics. Yeah. That's, that's how one of the guys in the office. But it's always what I was interested in. I, since I was 11, I was a musician. I grew up as a musician, mm -hmm. clarinet player, pretty good one, sax, piano, college, rock band, blues band. And since I was 11, I also wanted to be an architect. Worked during summers, mm -hmm. did not go into my dad's commodity trading business. <laughs> arrived at Princeton as an architecture student, left as an architecture student. And then, as fate would have it, at a very young age, the stars got lined up. Set of <laughs> events, design a club. Jimmy goes to the club. Jimmy hires me to do a club. The club becomes a studio. And before it's built, I have three other studios to do because... My first project was famous before it opened. Wow. Yeah. It's 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 not supposed to happen that way, but that's how it happened. Fifty years ago. Fifty-one <laughs> years ago. Actually. Yeah. It's, it's, we're on we the, the PR team we had this fiftieth anniversary parade for a year. Mm -hmm. And finally I said, Okay guys, that's enough. Yeah. Uh, I, I gotta get back to work now. Enough. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I mean, like for instance, when we first got introduced to, to what you were doing. I mean, you're not the first person to try to put some damping under a speaker, but when we got introduced to where you were going with this, it was like, hey, this is kind of interesting. Let's mm -hmm. let's see if it works. Yeah. Let's look at the science, which I looked at. We tried to test it ourselves. That didn't work out very well. And then I did the most obvious test, and you were there, and I'll remember it forever. I said, let's just put a few of these in a room and get six people who really know what they're listening to. Uh, not me. I, I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm a C. <laughs> I'm talking about guys that really can hear the difference. Yeah. And let's see if there's a difference. I, the hell with all the science. The hell with the tests. Mm -hmm. And everyone said, there is a difference. It's yeah. absolutely. It, and I haven't. They haven't not been on our project since. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's the Boston Symphony here talking about that was BSO that was a moment of truth for me actually the guys up at uh, you know at Fish Mike Gordon he just got his mm -hmm. ATC stands and he was asking me you know, this, was there any trick I said no just enjoy the <laughs> and, hey, same thing there <laughs> a difference in 10 seconds yeah and these are guys that that, that know what they're listening to <clears throat> there, there, there are people that really can hear this difference, they're really blessed with that hearing, they're blessed with that set of connectors in their brain. Guys like Eddie Kramer, I, yeah. I remember walking into a session with Eddie, I said, can you really hear 2K when you add, two, when you add 2 dB at 2K in the middle of a complex recording for somebody like Jimmy or Zeppelin? He says, yeah, I can. <laughs> okay, Turn, close your eyes. And I went over, he was in the middle of a mix, big mix, you know, yeah. was, I some group yeah. out in the studio. And I went to the equalizer, I went to 2K, and I popped 2 dB in. I mean, I couldn't hear the difference. I, mm -hmm. I didn't hear it. And Dan, he says, yeah, he did something at 2K on the guitar track. He did something. <laughs> I around to 1K, 2K, he did something. Yeah. And that's when I realized that those tiny, they're not, most people can't hear the difference, but when you aggregate that change, yeah. it's like a great painting. Yeah. It's just better. Yeah. And the experience, even on a car radio, is is better. And we're lucky to have those people. We're lucky to have people that can write those songs. Yeah. And so you got on to something there with the, the, the science was always there. And and then, of course, you've taken it to another dimension by <laughs> making models in the books. And, and that's cool, too. Some of the first models were, to be honest, a little bit ugly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, they worked. <laughs> well, I wanted them to look substantial and do your expensive uh, auditors. So you came full circle yeah. and realized that people have to look at these things, yeah. or or not look at them. Yeah. <laughs> but kudos to your work. It's been uh, yeah. Not nice. it's. Thank you. It's really cool to recommend something, and then everyone says thank you, and I say, well, don't thank me. Thank Dave. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me just let me just finish up by asking you one more question here. Yeah. I've heard you mention, or I've heard you say on many occasions, it's about the vibe. You describe vibe. 
What's the definition of recipe? What? Definition of recipe, and is this something that somebody could buy from WSDG, or is it a result of a process? Well, you got three questions there. I mean, vibe is just a hip word for, for the architecture. I mean, architecture is sculpting at a human scale with programming. If you take the human scale out and you take programming out, you have sculpture. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah. When you have a program, by that I mean requirements, rooms, yeah. doors, windows, all the other stuff, and you're at human scale, yeah. i.e. people are going to be, you have architecture. Okay. Mm -hmm. So vibe is the art part of architecture. It's the AR in architecture. Mm -hmm. that's, that's vibe. And yes, people can, people can buy our vibe, or they can have their own vibe, in which case what, they're, what we're often providing is we're shepherds. So for instance, when we're dealing with somebody like, like a Mike Gordon or an Alicia Keys, these are, these are artists, they are music artists, but they're artists, very much artists, and they, and they see things visually, and some of them see things visually more than others, hmm. okay? There we might provide vibe, or we might provide a sense of architecture, or art, but we often are working more like guides or shepherds. Hmm. Um, so here's the materialization that you need, and here's some directions that maybe you might want to consider, but then we're not going to tell you what color hmm. that would be. On the other hand, try to stay away from light tones because they're going to be reflecting in the glass, and you're not going to want to see it on your monitor. So we bring what is called technical interiors. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, because we've done so many projects, people say, you know, I just want to let you guys wail. You guys, it's your turn. And we do. <laughs> We're, it's one of the first questions we ask people on projects. Sometimes we'll take a project because they want our vibe. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we, okay, so that means that that uh, that uh, judging matrix that I spoke of yeah. is higher. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a little less speed because they're going to let us they're going to let us paint. Yes. Okay, so a little bit of everything. Yeah, I, that, I kind of circled around that answer. Um, we're, again, very blessed because we have a nice number of projects. So when um, something comes along where we're not in charge of the vibe, for instance, we're working with another architectural group, we're, we're happy to stand, stand back and just mm -hmm. let them work. So we're going to make you look like rock stars. We're okay with that. Some architects get a little fearful of us. A lot of times we're paired with architects and we're actually bigger than them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually yeah. bigger firm. Yeah. Um, so we have to be careful of that. And that's, that's just a communications yeah. issue. We've gotten better at that. Um, we get our share of projects where, where we lead on. And then sometimes we're on, for instance, uh, BSO. That's our project. That's our vibe. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we got it approved and we shared it. But basically, Chris... And Nick, uh, not without their feelings and opinions, trusted us that we would pick it up. There was kind of no vibe. It's in the basement. You know, it's, it's, there's, there's no vibe in that basement. It's, it's a, you've been there. <laughs> so, you know, they said, you know, you, you figure it out. You, you make it feel the way you think it should feel so that when musicians walk in there, they're comfortable. Because, and I think we did a good job on it. I mean, we, you know. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's uh, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful space. Uh, we did a lot of the coloring with lights so it can change. Mm -hmm. We don't want to make it too overpowering because at the end of the day, what's going on there is a space where people have to listen to other another art form. And that's kind of always been a little bit of our philosophy. I don't want to make these spaces so overpowering that you forget about what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like most art galleries are white. They, you know, And in fact, you see this sometimes on... Some of these big superstar architect, super uh, super architect, star, star architect museums overpower the art, in which case they fail. Yeah. Um, they don't I mean, matter. I love the Guggenheim Museum, but I usually go to the Guggenheim to see the building. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times I go, and I don't even know, I, I don't even really care who's, what, oh, what who's showing. Who, <laughs> We're at Tia Beacon, which is a huge, it was a former factory building, huge building, right around 15 miles from us in the Mid-Hudson Valley. Um, the building is extraordinary, but it, does ne it never overpowers the art. Yeah. 
Park is always, uh, is always first and foremost. So that's that's a yeah. philosophy, I guess. We've yeah. I'm a tiny bit surprised that you're focusing on the architecture. I when vibe, I thought for sure you would say it was feel, and I would have thought you would take the visual aspects. You know the I think we might and, be and you were pulling in the and the acoustic and and so uh, interesting. Well, the acoustics for us until we get into certain kinds of settings, live venues have to have a kind of neutrality. Yeah, we make. I mean, I I can take a room and make it bass heavy. That's that's easy, and we've done that. We've been forced to do that for certain artists. Yeah, not going to mention, but that's. But we're not really succeeding if we do that. Yeah. I mean, we're making our we're making the client happy, but then everything's going to leave base light. It's going to have to get remastered, and it, it, this is not our job. That's yeah. not what we're supposed to be doing yeah. in critical listening rooms. Maybe in a club, that's different. Okay, so might be more of a semantic conversation. Okay, but yeah. um, nexus of architecture and acoustics is how I want to leave. Yeah, wonderful. By the way, Josh gets credit for that term. Like Josh Morris, who you know. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to take a hard stop here due to That's another That's great, event. John. It's always... And, uh, it's Dave, always... Stay safe up there in Canada. And uh, we, we got the light at the end of the tunnel. I start to, I'm starting to see a little crack. Yeah. And we just have to get through another 60 days here. Vaccines are starting in London, in England. That's really, really good news. And I guess we're going to get approval this week and... You know, we just be vigilant for another 60, 90 days. And I think when spring comes, it's going to look yeah. quite a bit more like, like it used to look. And I, I, we'll see each other again uh, in a live meeting. I hope you're right. Well, thank you very much, John. It's always a pleasure getting a call from you or members of your team. And right. thank you very much for today. Thank and I look much. forward to seeing you again. Thank bye you. Bye-bye, John. Thank you.